Yeah, so uh, before we go on to talk about the Barrow match, um, we've got another busy week this week. Tuesday, we're in the Cup against Bradford. But then on Saturday, of course, we will be facing uh, Tranmere. And we thought, who better to have on to discuss that than a man who played in seven out of the eight games that we played against Tranmere since we renewed rivalries in recent years. Uh, the only game he missed was an FA Trophy match. Um, I'm talking, of course, about uh, a friend of the podcast, former Wrexham midfield dynamo, Jay Harris. How's it going, Jay? All good, thanks yourselves. Yeah, all good to you, mate, all good. Um, you're stationary, ready to go. <laughs> good man. Thanks, yeah. um, I mean, t- talk to us about, um, you know, what, that rivalry has been like in recent years when you were part of it? It was crazy, I didn't realise. Obviously, I, I my understanding was the, the Wrexham-Chester derby. Uh, and from a player point of view, the, the Wrexham-Tramia was, I feel it was way bigger in terms of, just due to the fan base alone. Uh, and I didn't realise it was a rivalry, to be honest with you, until I played in it and, and the, the hype and the build-up into it. But... As I say, going towards the grounds of, of on game day, the hype in that week, and then even even once you step out to do the warm up, you know you're in the game. You know the atmosphere is electric and everything about it. You just they're the games you want to be involved in, and as a player, they uh, they make you tick. Bigger, bigger than the Chester derby. I like that one, Jay. Uh, it's like a little backhanded compliment to our to our smaller smaller neighbours. Um, <laughs> Just looking at the, the, there's one thing that we always ask, right? And I'm going to ask you because you played with this fella. Uh, we're always getting linked with Andy Cook. Should we have signed Andy Cook? 100%. 100%. Uh, people talk about his physique. We used to call him Andy Cook. He looks like a duck. But uh, he, uh, that was one of our songs when we when we, we got promoted. And we had a, quite a bit of fun with it. But... Listen, aesthetically, he doesn't look the greatest, but he knows where the goal is. Everything he works hard, he can hold the ball up. He's he's all round perfect striker, and I love playing with him. and And he's a he's a great lad, and yeah, one hundred percent, you should have should have signed him. If if he looked like a duck, how did you describe uh, Jimmy McNulty? Because that always <laughs> um, confused me because he got some stick quite quite Steve, Steve McNulty. Steve, I don't know where I got Jim from. Steve McNulty, of course. Um, I mean, again, you look, you talk about physique, and he looked like more dog and duck player. But I don't think sometimes he got the respect he deserved. If I'm honest, what? what, what tell us about him because mad, mad wow. player, better than what, what many wow. thought. He, he, he's probably the best centre half I've played with. One because he helped me a lot. He, he talked. He was on and off the pitch. People don't understand what he did off the pitch. He helped everyone. It uh, doesn't matter what position. Staff members, he helped them. He was just the ultimate captain, ultimate pro. Although, yeah, <laughs> his body type wasn't an ultimate pro, but everything else was. He, as I say, he helped everyone. On the pitch, he was a true leader. You'd always get 8 to 10 out of 10 out of him. He was he was incredible. And a lot of people underestimate him. And that's when, that's when he was at his best, when people were... We're saying back against the ropes, uh, play on Steve McNulty, play on Macher. No one ever got the best of him. And he was that clever. He'd never put himself in a foot race because he wasn't the quickest. So why would you put yourself in a foot race with someone that's quick? So he'd always be one step ahead. And I think that's what made him stand out from the rest. One being obviously his physique. And two, how good of a player he actually was. Yeah. Um. Obviously, in my head, I, I thought I thought for some reason that you would played for Wrexham against Tramir. Never transpired. We had you for five years, 2010, 2015, for the second spell. You go to Tramir for four years. As Risa said then, out of the eight clashes we've had since we renewed those rivalries for the first time since 2005, you featured in seven of them. Um, amazingly, and very unlike you, you got booked in three league games in a row against Wrexham. Um, including, yeah, both in the both games of the 2016-2017 season. I know we've already touched on the atmosphere and, and the sort of uh, derby hostilities and stuff. What, what, what were your your better memories? I suppose, I suppose the better memories for you are the wins on your on your side of things. But in terms of 
is there any specific games that stick out in your mind for you against the, the those Tranmere Wrexham clashes? Anything that really stands out for you? Do you know? Do you know what? I, this is racking me brain, brain over the last couple of days. Uh, there's only two what stand out, and I think it was the first one. Was it two two at the race course? It was two all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, only because I, I felt like I got a great reception off. Obviously, one I was a tiny player at the time, so I got a reception off them. But I felt like I got a great reception off the off the Wrexham fans, uh, and I and I felt really that made me feel welcome. I, I from from obviously just just leaving the club and then the rivalry where it was, but like they're always in my heart, the Wrexham fans, and that 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 stands out a lot for me. One, it was my first game back, and two, the reception I got, which I, I really enjoyed, and yet yeah, the game wasn't the way it wanted to go. It was a two-two draw, so best for both ends. But I think that sticks out, and then. You know what? The only one I can remember after that was uh, when Wedge Sam uh, tackled me and got sent off. That's the they're the only two I really remember. I seen a, I think we drew it at Prenton Park. I think it was two two or three three as well. I think we were three one up and then you come back three all. Uh, they're the only three I remember after that. I'll be honest, I can't remember the others. I remember the sorry, I remember the game I didn't play in the FA Trophy. We were getting rested because obviously I think we we were pushing for playoffs at that point. Hmm. Do you wish he hadn't got sent off Wedge in that game? Because that seemed to galvanise us and go on to win it. Yeah, I, I, I just think that was... I don't think we were great. Like, no disrespect, we had James Alabi up front of that day and he weren't the, great, the greatest striker we had. Uh, not a bad striker, but we had better players at the time. Uh, I just think once you went into the low block on the, on the Dean, I just... We, didn't, we could, didn't, didn't find a way through and he's hit on the counter and I think I come off a corner and... Who was the score? The striker, Holroyd. It's Holroyd. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I just. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right in what you're saying. I think. I think if it's eleven v eleven, I think we go on and beat you because you're a lot more open. But obviously, once you went compact, we we not know for how to break you down. Any any. I don't sp- remember the other the other games. I'll bring Andy back in a second. But in in terms of opposing players on on. Obviously, you're you're playing in the white. In terms of players you came up against, is there any player we can take Wedge out of it because that's unfair because he clobbered you and gets sent off. But in terms of any other players that you come up against, you thought, yeah, didn't like playing against him because we know we know your qualities, we know your combative nature. Is there anybody that you came up against thought, right, he's not bad? In the, in the, in the Wrexham side, yeah, it was. And this is not being disrespectful. I think me in that moment. I think people feared me more than I feared them. I think I was just in that. I think I was back to me early Wrexham days uh, when I went back to Tramia, you know, sort of rejuvenating myself after the Kevin Wilkin era. Uh, yeah. and, I, and I thought I was hitting some type of form. So I didn't really fear anyone that was in the whole league. Uh, I think maybe that was a confidence or arrogance thing. Uh, that's just the way I was. Because uh, I always thought I'd be fitter than people, I'd be nastier than people. I wouldn't football you to death. I can play football, but I weren't the greatest footballer. But me, me other, me other attributes outclassed that. So I, I just felt I was a bit, a bit more coming into me prime, and I weren't fearful of anyone. Just sort of. Wedge, um, to, to be I, fair, Wedge, Wedge was a tough player because he was, he was sort of similar to me. He'd smash it, he'd run after you and stuff like that. So annoying more than anything. Um. <laughs> Jay, I don't know how much you know about Tramir now, because obviously you're still playing to a good level, so it's hard for you to, to get across and look at them. But I've just had a word with my uh, Tramir supporting mate. First thing he says is, Jay Harris is exactly the sort of player we're missing at the moment. He also says that by far their best player at the moment is Connor Jennings. And then he mentions someone, Hawks, who I think is the best player, but on the bench. Do you know Do you know much about Tramir and what Wrexham might come up against? I don't. I know, I know the players and I've watched... I'll always go back and watch my old club highlights. Every, every, I'll look out for the scores and I'll watch the highlights. And I've just previously watched the highlights. I think we've just been beat 2-1 by uh, Notts County. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't want to be too harsh here, but at the moment I don't think they're in, they're in great form. I think they've got great attacking players. I just think they can see them every single week. Uh, so I, I honestly, I, I don't want to comment on them because I, I don't, I see highlights, I, I see highlights, I don't see games, but they're not in the great form at the moment and they are conceding goals. But 
they can score goals. They got some good players like obviously Connor, Josh. They got I think Dennis and players like that that can can score goals. Yeah, I'm just moving away from the Tranmere game because I know we don't have you for, for for very long. Have you watched the documentary at all? No, no, that's not something that appeals to you at all. No way. Uh... Obviously, I, don't, I haven't watched it, but I don't even think I'm on the documentary because I think, as I spoke previously, I was the only one that refused to sign a waiver to, to be seen on the documentary. Yeah. Uh, so out of principle, I wouldn't I wouldn't fall on my sword. Not a chance I'd watch it. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, Man, we, have, we, we, had, uh, we had Paul Rutherford on a couple of weeks ago, and he, he, he went out to that uh, US tour, you know, the six... Six v six, and he says his uh, he says his opinion of Sean Harvey has to- uh, has totally changed. Do you think yours ever would? <laughs> I, it's it's not it's not that I, I had this previous a uh, brief conversation with him. I haven't got an opinion on him. What he did, I think's wrong. I uh, that's from a personal point of view. Uh, what he does for the club or whatever, I, I can't comment on that because I don't know enough. Uh, if I met the guy and we sat down and we had a conversation, maybe things will change. But to say I like him or dislike him would be harsh. I, I just, from my point of view, I just think it was the wrong thing he did to release me from the club. Yeah, yeah, no problem. There's, there's, there's no sort of sense going over, uh, over all ground. Right, last thing from me. Uh, you know, we we have like this quick fire round where we ask people questions, and one of the questions is, which player would you least like to fight? Now, the answer invariably is Jay Harris. So I'm going to ask the question, turn it around on you. Which player would you least like to fight from your Wrexham days? Any of the Wrexham days? Yeah. Yeah. Either, 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 either period. Do you know what? Probably Jake Spate. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Jake Spate, like... uh, he had a nasty streak in him. You could say the big lads, he had crates and all that, but they were big softies. Uh, Westy was dead strong. Keaty was, you know, was like me. He was just a little Jack Russell and Joris Elver batteries, but uh, and he was nasty as well. But yeah, I'd probably say Jake Spate. Yeah, I can see that definitely, definitely. Um, Jay, j- just finally before before we let you go, um, you've been promoted from League Two. What do you need to get to get out of that league? Is it is it as difficult as the conference? Is there something you need in League Two that you that you don't need in the conference, or or you know what what's the key to it? Ride the wave. It's as, it's as simple as that. You ride the wave. You don't you don't change nothing. You, I think you look at most squads. If you go and repeat the history, I can I can go on my experience. And we didn't change our team much. We tinkered it and had a better quality. The main thing are your strikers. I remember Dean Saunders saying 10, 12 years back, and I've always I've said it to everyone, you're only as good as your strikers. We had Andy Cook and James Norwood. We had that, we had Paul Mullen sitting in behind that. So we had the Connor Jennings, Kieran Morris, Josh Janelli, we had players like that. And I don't see how if you're scoring goals and you've got a team and a camaraderie which are together. You've just rolled a wave of a habit of just winning games. To go and change that, you'd have to be a fool. And it's the players that do that, we done it. We had a complete exodus when we went to League One. And then they got relegated the year after, Tommy. Although, yeah, it was on the points per game, but I think they deserve to get relegated anyway. Uh, I think you've just got to keep a good squad together that know how everyone plays. Don't change too much. Tinker about add a, a a better addition here and there. But I don't think you need to change much. I don't think the quality is that big. I think if if anything, you get more time on the ball and stuff like that. So I just you can't change much. Yeah. That's my that's my opinion and that's my experience of it. Um so lastly, I, I know we keep saying lastly, but this You said lastly like five one. times, Andy. I know. I've got a Listen, I'm, I'm I'm only going for a coffee, but I just I just didn't know whether it was going to be a, a two three hour one. That was all. Otherwise, no, just... no, no. Paul Mullin, is it? Does it even surprise you how how much of a level he he's he's sort of gone up and how much of a talisman he is now? Or could you always see that in his uh in his nature? Yeah, uh, in terms of quality and ability, uh, you can never you can never doubt that. We used to see him 
probably the best finisher in training every single day. Didn't get a chance uh, because we had James Norwood and Cookie that were on fire for a couple of seasons. So it was tough for Paul. He'd done it at Morecambe. And then, I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect him to go to Cambridge and do what he did. I expect him to be a good player there and to score goals. But he, I think he blew everyone out the water what he did. And then he left there, went to Wrexham, and he he's continued this. So you don't just score goals and you it, it's luck. He's done it year after year after year. So, yeah, you know what? He deserves everything he's got because he works hard. But in terms of talent, it was always there. Now it's just to the forefront on the exposure. He's out of Cambridge and now come to Wrexham. He's, as you said, he's the talisman and he, he, he's the main man. On that note, I'm going to stop Andy asking any more questions. Uh, Jay, <laughs> Is there not one last one, no? That prediction. Happened. Prediction. Oh, prediction. Give us a quick prediction for the game. Prediction for the game. Uh, is it at the race course, is it? No. no. Oh. Oh. I'm going to go for... I think, I think it'll end up at 4-2, 4-3. And I, and, I, and I will go Wrexham just because... I think Wrexham at the moment are sort of... Where Liverpool was, it was like, we'll score more goals than you. Hmm. They can see them a lot of goals, but they're also scoring a lot of goals. Uh, I think it'll be a four three, four two. I think there'll be over five goals in the game. But I do, I do think I think Wrexham are a lot stronger than Tramia at the moment. Well, let's hope that you're right, Jay. Enjoy your coffee. Thanks for your time. Cheers, mate. Cheers, thanks, thanks for that. Pleasure, Catch up with you soon. See you later. Yeah. Take care. Thanks a lot. All right, all right. Um, so there you have it. A prediction from former Wrexham midfielder Jay Harris. Uh, Andy, do you see that many? Goals being scored. What are your thoughts? Uh, t- ooh, uh, look, I've, uh, looking at Tranmere, I don't think they're the best defensively. Um, I don't. I don't know. <sighs> I don't know where we are up front. I mean, yesterday Tim will tell us more, and we're, we're going to go. We're going to have to go back and and, and look at Barrow again because I looked at that team and I thought that's the team I would pick. With the players we've got available, and let's not forget, we've got a lot of injuries at the moment. That is the midfield makeup I like because I think it's solid and it's got mm. a bit of everything. It's yeah. got, you know, Luke Young with his improved delivery, his actual leadership skills. Tom O'Connell is just a lovely player, and Elliot Lee is on fire at the moment. Uh, and maybe, you know, you look at it and go, well, we didn't do well enough. It's one each. But we had so many chances to win that game that. If you take, if you, if you carry, if you make that much many chances in every game, you will get promoted. It's as simple as that. So, I, 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 and you know, their their equaliser, I thought was a bit fluky. I mean, it was that probably their sort of first it was real a great, shot goal, great goal, great oh, finish, brilliant finish. Yeah. Brilliant it was. Finish. It wasn't a massive screw up at the back or anything like that. It no. was just a got to say, well taken goal. Yeah. Um, I I'm, spent, I'm, 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 mate. I'm still happy about what happened yesterday. I think that's a good. That's a good point on the road, and we played well. So let's not sort of say that, you know, we're, we're we're way off, and people on Twitter are saying Parky's under pressure and things like that. I I, I don't get that. I don't do think mean, that. Do all. you mean X? We need we need we need a we need a we need a ninety minute performance. That's what we need. Um, yeah. Because you know, as as good as great as we were in the first half, we were bang average second half. There's no there's yeah. no getting away from that. Um, but then we did have a couple of chances again. You know, Dolby cuts back better to, to Palmer, probably puts the game to bed as well. So small margins. And I know there was a clamour saying, people saying, oh, if, if Mullins in that game, we win it. And I was like, I'm not so sure. But then having watched it back, probably right. They're probably right. I mean, Palmer misses a Sky's one, Bickerstaff's. Bickerstaff, look, I'm not I'm not criticising him at all. He's getting in the positions, he's creating the chances, and, and he's forcing the save. So he's he's doing more than his more than enough to to keep his spot again. Um, I thought O'Connor faded a little bit towards the end of that game, but it was warm late on, so it's not not surprising. But him and Young do bring a lot of balance to that midfield. Um, I, yeah, I, many, do, I, I agree. And like. I, 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 for whatever reason, um, justifiable or not, there was a lot of knives out for Mark Howe before this game. I don't understand it. Um, you know, I think he was he, he played a hell of a lot of games just last season. He got us to where we needed to be. And I think there's probably not a lot of not enough respect on his name for what he for what he's done for us. People tend to focus on the negatives all too easily, but I think he's probably made more saves than mistakes. So that's the way of looking at it. And pulled off a decent save yesterday, pushed it out out of danger as well, and. Decent, and hopefully that that 
you know, calms a few of the people who are a little bit nervous about having him in between the sticks. I thought he did really well. Um, so, yeah, point gained or two lost, it doesn't really matter. As long as you're picking up points on the road, which we are doing, um, you know, plenty more against Tranmere, please, all three. Yeah, I think I think that's the key, isn't it? I mean, uh, again, though, I would say even, even on the idea we need a 90-minute performance, oh, of course, I totally get that. But, you know, from my understanding of, for example, Stockport season last year, I think you speak to most Stockport fans and they'll say, we didn't put a 90-minute performance together until the last 10 games. Like, it's a tough bruising league we are not going to be going and winning three nil at places it's going to be nip and tuck we're going to win two then we're going to lose two and I think as you say someone like Barrow give me a point all day long thank you very much then at home we'll do them and as long as we're doing that broadly speaking we will be there or thereabouts end of the season um Liam what was your take on yesterday's game you've been waiting patiently um, yeah, I think it, I'm I'm relatively content with it to be honest. I don't, I don't understand some of the sort of negativity that surrounded the early season. I, I don't know. I'm not sure that I was quite expecting it. I was maybe expecting us to have won a couple more games by this stage, but it's not the first time that we've had a slow start to the season in the Parkinson. Um, so, and I, th- I think as long as you're in touch with sort of the promotion picture by Christmas time. I don't think it's too much of a concern. Um, I predicted that we would be uh, a team in the playoffs and I'm still sticking to that at the moment. But this is the sort of league that, as we've seen before, you know, when we got promoted out of it, we weren't that hot the first half of that season under Dennis Smith. But then we went on a, a really decent run and ended up in third. And I think it is the kind of league where you can sneak into the the, the automatic spots if if you've got the quality, I think at the moment it's about getting those injured players back into the team. We look like we need a defender like Hayden who's, who can win in a foot race because I'm not necessarily sure any of our centre-backs are doing that at the minute. Um, Mullin goes without saying, really, although I do think you know there's this clamour to rush him back in. When you've had the sort of thing he's had with a collapsed lung, will he come back exactly the same straight away? I don't know if he'll have the same... You know, you know, it's quite a difficult one, isn't it? And I've never experienced it, but I do wonder, will he be... Should we collapse uh, your have... lung, Liam, and see how long it takes you to recover? If you're volunteering, yeah, yeah just grab a pencil as, and as jam an it in. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite easy to do. Yeah, if, if you want to do it, we'll, okay. we'll see. We'll see how long it takes me to recover compared to Paul Mullin. And we the could li- we, a Andy, you could, you could live stream it. This is this has got trust versus the lettuce all over it again. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's lung versus Mullin's lung. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, uh, can I ask a here. question? Uh, as someone who didn't can I watch... ask a question? Can I ask a last question? Yes. But before you do, Tim, did Luke Young take corners again yesterday? He did, yes. Hallelujah. Was there an improvement? They were. They were very, very good. Um, yeah, because as great as Alec Lee's been, we, I think we're pretty set on the fact that he can't really take corners. Um, he can do everything else. But yeah, Luke Young was really, really good yesterday. And I have to mention the defence, given the fact that our defence hasn't has you know, the shot the, the the spotlight's been shone on it for obvious reasons. They were really really good yesterday. I thought Boyle was tremendous. Really really. Sort of yeah, he did do well. Yeah, I thought he's really good. Positioning was good. Toza bar one or two hospital passes, he was really good. And they were on it. They were on it. The the energy, the pressing was there. Um, and yeah, I'm in agreement. You know, if if we put in a 45 minute like that against a lot of other teams, you are going to be out of sight. It just didn't quite fall for us yesterday. So uh, I'm almost inclined to agree agree with Jay Harris that it could be a fair few goals next week. Yeah, I mean, as as Liam pointed out, we're, we're missing our two best players, arguably in in Hayden and and, and Mullin. So once Tony Cliff's going to return as well. He's he's yeah. training, and McLean apparently and was in the warm yesterday. Was involved in the warm up. So. Um, and there's there's a quote which has come through to me from Parky now. He says, we're in talks of players in different positions, but for me, the most important thing is that some of our players are really starting to come into form. And he's right. Yeah. Well, he played he, he, he played the midfield I would play, and, you know, I would implore him to to explore that for the next couple of matches, if, if he can, really, because I just think that midfield's got, got a little bit of everything. And, you know, you can bring on the likes of Andy Cannon, who's a lovely little silky player, um, to try and open up a game if you're behind or, or keep the ball if, you, if you're in front. But, you know, I think you need the platform first and that midfield gives you the platform, for me anyway. 
A word for Elliot Lee as well, who is now third joint top scorer of League Two. Uh, mm. One goal with five goals, one goal behind uh, young Will Evans for Newport County, who is, I just discovered, from San Gedwin, which is near Sanamanech. So, what's that, 40 minutes south of Wrexham? No, Don't I didn't add. know that. Yeah. Mm. Are, you tr- are you that. trying to create a room a rumor here? <laughs> well, do I need to, you... hang on, hang on. Do I need to get my uh, my, my jingle? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he is a he's a wing back who can play up front, and he scored six goals this season. So... Imagine that on on Championship Manager, a wing back who can play up front. What would that be? D D L D M L. No, it would be R W B R W B S T, right? Comma S T. Okay, yeah, you don't get many of them, do you? I haven't played. I haven't played football manager for about ten years. Um, but yeah, he he's played at wing back, and he's uh, he's currently he's played for Wales C, but he's made fifty appearances for Newport County and scored eight goals. But six of them have obviously been this season since he's been moved further up the pitch. One to keep an eye out for in the Newport games. When's the first Newport game again? Christmas time, isn't it? Yeah, it's around about just before Christmas, is it? Like the Ooh. Saturday before? Ooh. Yeah, is it twenty twenty third. You can put your purple jumper on again, Bruce. It's it, it shit purple jumper night at the uh, the Mines Grim, by the way. Get your tickets now. Um, very much looking forward to that one. Um, that will be, and as I say, hopefully we're back to a full compliment by then. Um, any other business, gentlemen? Uh, well, Got we've got some... Bradford on Tuesday uh, in the Cup. Um, I can't, I can't, I don't think I can watch it. I don't think it's on iFollow, is it? Um, I think Sky might have the uh, the rights to to the League Cup, which is a bit of a blow for me. Uh, but oh. I'm, guys are getting over to watch it live, and then we've got uh, then we've obviously got Tranmere. And I never answered your question, Reese, but I do think I think we can go there and win. I Tranmere. think, yeah. Okay, good. That was your Bradford, question. The, 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 sparky, the Sparky Parky Derby. Um, <laughs> One manager is, is well thought of around these parts and the other managers are very well thought of in Bradford, blah, 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 blah. Um, plenty of changes afoot for that when we're thinking that Nicholas took him into goal. Uh, yeah, I, he's going to rotate again, isn't he? I'd say so, yeah. Ring um, the changes. Yeah, who knows? I mean, it'll be, I think, yeah, big win on Tuesday would be a bit of a confidence booster off, um, you know, off a slightly you know rotated side that would be good and then go full noise against Tranmere then and see what we can get because I you know I was just looking at their form they've only won one this season and they've lost the rest uh Tranmere and they've lost some they lost to Barrow at home mm. earlier on in the season uh since then they've lost to they beat Harrogate 3-0 and then lost to Salford 3-4 again at home um, so they they can score some goals as well, but also leak it at the back. So Jay Harris might be right. There might be quite a few goals in this one next Saturday. Who knows? Um, but on that note, I think it's time to say goodbye. Unless there's any other business, gents. I've got some. Oh, we do have some uh, some transfer updates. Okay. Hang on, others. hang on, everyone. <laughs> hang on, everyone. Oh no! What have I been listening to recently? Oh, I listened to the Labyrinth soundtrack. That's. Uh... Andy, have you got an ape? Have you, have you got an ape wearing headphones on your T-shirt? I like to move it, move it. I like to move it. I like to move it. I'm just yeah. Gonna play that right, yeah. it's okay. time for everyone's favourite part of the week, where <laughs> uh, Liam goes over the um, transfer news. What's the name of the the segment again? I like to move it. Is that just the name of it? I like Liam's to move it. Move moves. it. Liam Liam's moves, um, and it, yeah, last time this this until January, thank God, because the transfer window <laughs> lambs shut midweek. So um, Liam, what have you got? So Wonderboy has updated his Google documents that he I, I now I now seem to think he shares with about half the population of of Wales or perhaps more. Um, so according to this, the King will return soon. The King being Paul Mullin, who is apparently due back in contract contact training next week or plan to be which would be pretty huge if 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 huge if true as the kids say online uh which um, which week did he send this doc last week so it would be this week or did he send it this week so it would be next week uh, it it's been it was been updated in the last 24 hours is all i know so i i'm just is sunday the first day of a new week or is it the last day of an old week oh God, don't get into that. Don't get into that. Monday is the first day of the week, and I will not hear otherwise. 
Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Stop trying to derail my segment with crap questions. Anyway, um, one more question. So, <laughs> Wrexham are eyeing up a move for Wickham forward Brandon Hanlon. Now, I think that's the one that Peter O'Rourke um, mentioned earlier in the week. He's usually pretty spot on, but if I'm honest, I looked at the I looked at the his stats and stuff, and it didn't particularly excite me as a as a prospective signing. I don't know about if anyone else checked him out. Nope. No. Okay. Move on. <laughs> Take that as a definite no. <laughs> okay. So, um, due to recent issues with the Kevin Druids pitch, it seems the women's team could start their season at Chirk Triple A's instead. They're only home game this pre-season took part, place at uh, Grango School. So there's been maintenance on the pitch at Kevin Druids and obviously there's been ownership issues and the likes with the, the football club there. So it actually wouldn't surprise me if they were looking elsewhere. I'm just assuming it would have to meet standards though because there's pretty stringent standards in that um, in that league. So there we go. Um, they couldn't and, go back to Ponky, Ponky Banks even if they wanted to, Liam, is that? No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't. It's not up to scratch, so they'd have to find... Can we not play at the um, race course? That's, that's one argument. That's one argument, although our pitch is notoriously um, yeah. <laughs> dicey, but um, we'll see. So, yeah, I think that's most of the updates. We knew that Hayden and Tunner Cliff are back in training, don't we? So that's got to be good news. Um Fingers crossed for some players returning over the next few weeks. Yeah, I've just had a look at this Wickham guy's stats. He scored, well, according to Wikipedia, which you can't always trust, but he scores one in six, it looks like at the moment. Um, ooh, I'm not really sure about about that. I mean, he might have started the this, this season on fire, but, you know, still. still I can see I'm, us going, going without making another signing. I can genuinely see us not making any between now and when the window shuts. Uh, and and another, another, another Wonder Boy update as of 15 minutes ago, because um, he does speak to the population of Wales. Um, he's <laughs> also after a goalkeeper by all accounts. Um, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'm sorry, I forgot about Ben Foster. Then <laughs> that was me saying what. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, that's maybe the one position where you could see us potentially making a sign because if we went to the trouble of getting someone in at the end of last season, yeah. Do we need Do we need one, or do we stick with Mark Howard? I think we need the three keepers personally. One for, <laughs> one for home games, one for away games, one for cup games. I mean, look, if Howard does get injured, you're left with you're left with a young Just four Irish keepers. Player. Yeah, but you know, I, I do think you need another keeper. <laughs> no, no, I do. No, no fair I'm, enough. Yeah, you've it's lost. Not gonna be, it's not going to be Danny Ward, is it? And it's it's not going to be Chris. No. No. I, I know. I, I, I said, I, I, said, we'd, no I said we'd signed Danny Ward in League One, and I was laughed out of the place. I'm yeah, still... League One is fair point, but not I was now, laughed. I was laughed out of you then when I said that because it would break the wage structure. Or something. I was. I said we get to League One, and Danny Ward will take us any further if, if we can. You, you can't laugh a serious newsreader out of the room. Thank you very that much. Might, that might be that might be nervous laughter oh, anticipation. Not. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if it was Rob, if it was Rob Shelley or someone, you know, maybe different. I you met Rob Shelley his... yesterday. Yeah. Uh, no, Mark Friday. He? Top top guy. Um, suave, debonair. Um, just everything yeah. you'd expect and more. E- everything I'd expect and more. One of the best blazers I've ever seen. Um, and I mean that really lovely fit as well. Um, but for, for, for context and for our American audience, Rob Shelley is a known ITV news presenter who has a certain way with words and actions. Yeah. They, they don't need introduction to Rob. Everyone knows who Rob Shelley is. They know, know him everywhere. The there must be someone has to set up a website with back catalogue of best bits because it is superb. Um, but actually, I just remembered one last thing we do need to discuss very quickly before we go. Another red card for Parky after the was whistle. It red? It was, was it red? red. I thought it was red. Or was it yellow? Was it? it wasn't red? Was I it was red? thought it was yellow. Oh, it looks red on the, on the highlights. It's- his enthusiasm seems to be really getting the better of him, though, uh, so far, doesn't he? The only, the only, I mean, obviously, I totally appreciate, I only saw the, so apologies for that fake news, everyone. It appears it was yellow. Um, however, he seemed very angry after the final whistle. The, the, the one thing I did think, 
crikey, I'm very glad Mark Howard saved that, was um, that breakaway where there was the most blatant foul on Tom O'Connor in the middle of the pitch. And, oh, uh, yeah. and it wasn't yeah. given. I was like, thank God that was saved because that would have been horrendous. Um, other than that, that's what, that's, what, that's, what, that's what Parker is furious about. Was, there was the, the foul on O'Connor and there was a foul on Lee. I think the, the Lee thing was when they broke away and scored, if I remember rightly. I, I, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't think it, that was They, foul, they yeah. fouled him. And then, and it's yeah, it's a great finish. I'm not even sure if if that finish was slightly deflected. On on watching it back, it looked like it's a slight deflection, but I still don't think Howard's getting anywhere near that shot. It's a good finish. No, um, finish. And then I, th- I think he's angry because he he doesn't the referee doesn't give us the chance to take the throw in like at the death. Like, yeah. Another, oh another yeah, that, that, that's what he's angry is. about. Um, no. quick straw poll: Are officials any better at this level? No. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Possibly. Well, they are, they're, they're a little also, bit better. A little bit. Also, I'm just, I don't know, man. I'm just bored of the excuses of refs. Do you know what I mean? Like the ones yesterday, I, I, I'd maybe I'll change my mind, but on, on my viewing, I did not think it was a foul on Elliot Lee. Um, I thought it was a foul on Tom O'Connor. And I'm, as, I, as I said, very glad that didn't go in. But also, refs are going to make mistakes. Of course, they are. In the same way that uh, bigger staff won't or someone will miss a one on one. Uh, a ref is going to make a mistake. They 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 haven't got VAR. They're human. So instead of whinging about a mistake, just get on with it. That's my personal view. Because you I, ain't going so to change I can't the give past stick. Too. So I can't give stick to any of the officials down the Mold Road side towards the. You absolutely, you absolutely can. But <laughs> it frustrates me when uh, you know the team is doing that or whatever. I, I oh, get okay. that it's frustrating, but I'm just like I'm, I'm parking after the whistle. I don't know. I love I love his passion. Love it, and as long, as long as I can, that, that was the argument I was no. concerned about. Before, before you berate the referee, you've got to remember Reese's rule. Conduct Reese's rule, and before you go to give him loads of loads of shit, just go. Oh, you might have just made an honest mistake there. Exactly, exactly. Use your energy <laughs> for better purposes, especially if you're actually playing the football match. Because you're, you're, that, ruining, that you're, you're ruining better, football by trying to make it a family fun, friendly environment. It's nothing about being family friendly. It's about what's the best chance of you actually winning the game for Wrexham. Is it spending twenty seconds chasing after the ref, shouting at him something that's not going to change because he cannot maybe, go back in time, or is maybe, it actually trying to get the ball back? He made it a little bit about himself yesterday in that second half, but there we are. I saw that. I thought that. I thought he was a bit flamboyant in uh, in some of his uh, some of his decisions and his just consistency. One thing that he would he would blow for ten minutes before he wouldn't ten minutes later, and I, you, that's all you want. You want if if the, if he's the sort of ref who's a right. I'm going to let a few physical things go. I am absolutely fine with that. Mm. I, I, I like that. But as long as it's for both teams in in, in all in all situations, um, yeah. And you know, with flamboyancy. Sorry, what, what's wrong with him being flamboyant? Nothing. nothing Is it Rob Shelley, referee in the game? <laughs> I mean, that, I would pay to see that. That that would that would be definitely top of my to do list. Let, let, let's wrap up because Reese has got a Sunday League football match to referee. So that, yes, that's thank you very much. Uh, time well, to go. Everyone Thanks, everyone. wins. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, And remember, it's the taking part that counts. Bye, everyone. See ya. Cheers.